Hey, 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 and welcome back to the channel, everybody. How are you all doing? This is a video just to elaborate on my last video and talk a little bit more in detail and give some more examples of how our pulse width modulation in SMC3 utilities and our PID loop, our proportional, integral, and derivative. And in SMC3 utilities, we have a smoothing, which basically works around our derivative. How uh, these settings can adversely or positively affect our motion simulator. Now, obviously, if you've gone to the effort of building a motion simulator, you want to try and get the very best out of the motion simulator you can. And so you want to try and set your settings up in your PID loop and in your pulse width modulation settings to really bring out all the dynamics in whatever game it is that you're playing. I'm going to give you an example. Let's talk about a Seto Corsa, for example, okay? Now, a lot of this can also revolve around the quality of the track that you're driving on and the quality of the vehicle that you're driving in and uh, basically who's put that together, uh, e.g., say a Kunios laser scan track versus a uh, pretty dodgy ordinary community-based track. Same with the vehicle, uh, depending on how well the physics and the research has gone into building the vehicle in a Seto Corsa, for example, versus someone that's just slapped one together uh, for the first time, maybe, and chucked it out there in the community for you to drive. There are going to be vast differences between the quality of those things and the data that you're getting from the road meshing and from the vehicle that will basically mean you've got a more realistic experience on your motion sim to something that could be quite unrealistic on the motion sim. And then our, our settings in SMC3 set up our power levels for our motors, how that then all works together with these tracks and cars. So last time, uh, in our last video, we talked about um, having some sort of more radical settings in SMC3 versus a typical uh, settings that I might have when I'm going to be doing lots of gaming, okay? I wanted you to see firsthand what happens uh, when we sort of really ramp up our PID settings versus our pulse width modulation settings. And this really revolves mostly around the minimum pulse width modulation and how much proportional we actually have set up in our PID loop. Now, in your PID loop, we can set up anything from zero to a thousand uh, points here on our proportional and our minimum pulse width modulation can go all the way up to 255, I believe it is. We have to have some pulse width modulation uh, set up on our motor, so it's getting some minimal voltage. And I found that this uh, basically mixed with whatever it is that I've got in my proportional can really uh, bring the rig to life. Uh, both in a uh, positive and negative way. Let's have a little bit of a look at that. Typically, uh, if I wanted a really sort of um, radical experience of my sim, and I'm talking probably the most about heave. So heave and road surfaces from road surface noise coming through the rig, that's really what I want to try and pick up the most. Dips and bumps, holes and things like that in the road. I want them to come through my motion sim in those front motors as much as I can for realism. And to really bring those things through, I need to have my proportional here at around that 500 mark. And my minimum, I need to run as high as I can run it without it starting to adversely affect the motors and for me to pump too much voltage into my motors and therefore cause them to oscillate and just do random things, even when the rig is just sitting idle without actually a game running. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about now. So particularly uh, the I and the D, the integral and the derivative, I just leave them always at one. And my smoothing for the uh, derivative, I just leave at one, okay? My uh, proportional, I ramp up 500. And I'll normally sit at around 40. So I'm going to do this by tens. I'll, no I'll ne normally run my minimum pulse width modulation at 40. Now let's ramp this up to 40. At the moment, things are pretty quiet. You can mainly hear the fans running um, in my uh, electronics box, but and not a lot of noise is coming from the motor, uh, especially even with my pulse width uh, maximum and my reverse quite high. These will go up to 255 and I'm at 230. 
But let's have a listen at what happens. Uh, let's have a listen to the motors when I start to ramp minimum uh, pulse width modulation, when I start to put some voltage into the motors. And you can hear that has increased the noise in the motor. Now, this is on motor one, so the left-hand side motor, the motor closest actually to the camera. Um, that's at 40, and I'll leave it at that. As you can see, the rig is stable. The rig's not sort of moving around. The motors aren't oscillating. There's nothing adverse happening with the rig at the moment. It's just getting a little bit noisy because of the voltage now that's flowing into that uh, left-hand motor closest to the camera. Let's see what happens if I keep increasing this minimum pulse width modulation. 50. 60. We can see here on our graph the PWM uh, voltage is coming through in the yellow here. You can see it's increasing towards the center. The motors are getting ever so noisier and I can feel vibrations actually coming through my rig. We're up at 80. And the rig is starting to move a little bit. That motor is starting to, of its own uh, will, because there's a lot of voltage being pumped into it, it's starting to oscillate ever so slightly. Let's go to 90. Okay, there we go. So we're starting to really tip over the edge. And you can see on the graph here, it's starting to get way too much voltage uh, and it's starting to run too high uh, to the center of the signal. Any higher, it's just going to get worse, okay? It's going to start getting more violent. And, and, and obviously, it's just too much. Now, if I back off my proportional... It helps it calm down, okay? But I'm going to suddenly lose dexterity and dynamics in my rig when I'm gaming if I have my proportional too low. So I need to bring my minimum pulse width modulation back down. I want as high as proportional as I can get. So let's go back to 500 because it's a really nice place to be that I've found in my experimentation with what the rig is doing in games. And then I'm going to basically just move my minimum pulse width modulation as high as I can get it without introducing too much noise into my motors, which ultimately, guys, is going to translate to my motors getting hotter faster when I'm actually gaming. So you're, the name of the game here is to get as much minimum voltage into your motors as you can without getting them too hot too quickly, okay? So really, for me, I found that sitting at around between 40 and 50 gives me a really dynamic motion simulator, especially with heave and road surface noise that I want coming through the rig uh, when I'm playing any given uh, driving simulation game uh, that it may be that I'm playing. So motor two here, I just need to bring it up as well to the same as motor one. So we're sitting on 50 there at the moment. And if I just let my rig sit here, both motors, left and right, uh, have a proportional of 500, and their settings are the same. And my rig will happily sit there with those uh, settings and not be doing anything adverse. No oscillation, a little bit, little bit noisy. The motors are a little bit noisy with the voltage at these levels, but I'll get quite a dynamic uh, motion sim. I'll get a lot of feedback in those front motors when I'm racing, and we're going to have a look at that now uh, in game. Okay, and so we're apples for apples. We're racing a game on the 1930s uh, Spa track in the D type Jag. But with our minimum pulse width modulation ramped up to 50 on both front motors, and that proportional in our PID loop sitting up at 500 and that's just giving me a really dynamic rig okay my front motors my surge my traction loss everything 
this. It's really responsive, and I can uh, I can check that against what's happening with my direct drive Fenatec force feedback steering wheel, and the information I'm getting through that is matching, is in sync with what I'm getting through those front motors, and I'm particularly concentrating on the road surface, on heave. That's why this is such a good track to demonstrate this. They've done a, a wonderful job in the road meshing in this old track, and it's just a great track to showcase the heave through your motion sim. So with that uh, proportional set up at, at 500 and my minimum pulse width modulation sitting at 50, my min and max pulse width, width modulations set up at 230. This is for both motors at the front, left and right. I'm getting fantastic feedback in my rig for what's happening on the road surface. It's, it's, it's fantastic. And I can see clearly that what the car's doing in the game, how it's moving around, what's happening with its suspension, etc. That is coming through in the rig really well. It's really well synced. Now this is quite a rough part of this track. Really bumpy. You can see it on the road surface actually in game. And you can see how it's coming through really, really well uh, on the front motors. To me, what I'm feeling through the rig is desirable. This is what I want. I want a realistic amount of feedback to what the car's doing in the game. And with those settings, with these particular motors, so the ZD1735s are 180 watt uh, 12 volt DC motor. These settings work really, really well for, for this size wattage. So if you're going to use motors in that sort of range, you know, between 180 and say 220 watts, I'd say you could safely get away with very similar settings to how I've uh, set up my voltages and PID loop in SMC3 utilities without any problems. Keeping in mind that you must balance your settings overall with the noise that your motors are going to generate from the voltages and of course how hot they begin to get and how long it takes them to start getting hotter than what you would want them to get they can get they can get pretty warm 
for extended periods of time, no problems, but you don't want them getting sort of like, you know, burning hot to the touch. You're just running things too hot if that's happening and you're gonna have to back things off. Okay, hopefully this has uh, expanded a little bit on the previous uh, video and uh, showing you what some ideal settings are, I believe, for the ZD1735 motors. Give you some sort of guide to what you should expect to be able to set up when it comes time for you to basically start using your rig after you've uh, finished building it. Until I see you guys in the next video, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and take it easy out there. Ha <laughs> ha!